All right, guys, so in this video, I want to cover on how to adjust pilot fuel mixture screws on a multiple carb setup. Okay, and quite simply, the goal is to adjust the pilot screws to achieve the highest and smoothest idle RPM. Now, hopefully, your fuel screws will end up at two to three turns out. Then that tells you the pilot jets are correct, the correct size, and this will provide good acceleration when you rev up the bike and the RPMs will, dump, will come down quickly. So that is the ultimate goal right there, summarized in two sentences. And I got my notes here because I'm half asleep right now, so I need to just ramble off of this sheet. I wrote it all down. Okay, so I already have a YouTube video on this subject. However, it was like five years ago, and I like to dive a little deeper into this subject. Um, that video has over 2 million views and I also have a blog post on Pilot Jet Explained and that is like my most visited or, or viewed page on my website. So definitely check that out and then watch this video as well and hopefully it should answer all your questions on fuel screw tuning. Okay, so some people call this the fuel air mixture screw or fuel screw. I like to call it the Pilot Fuel Screw. Reason is it's the Pilot Circuit and then you even you, you put fuel or air in front of it. There's two types. There's a fuel screw and an air screw. A carburetor will have one or the other, never both. And it's important to know which type of screw you have because an air screw meters air and a fuel screw meters fuel. And you, they, they work opposite of each other in terms of turning it and whatnot. But in any case, we're covering fuel screws on a multiple carb engine on inline four in this video okay so i feel like the pilot jet is the most ignored jet in the carburetor everyone is so quick to swap needles clip positions and mains but i'm here to tell you that the pilot jet and the fuel or air screw fuel screw in this video adjustment will make the bike idle and accelerate way better and after all unless you own a hundred percent race bike you'll spend most of the time idling around and running down the road at eighth throttle cruising, which is all pilot jet. I also feel that it's the easiest circuit to jet because the answer lies in the fuel screw adjustment. The number of turns out or in will tell you whether you're too lean or rich on that circuit. Okay, also here are some observations I see on bikes newer than 1980. The pilot jet is usually lean by one to three sizes. And here's my theory on why. Bikes in the 70s really didn't have this problem. So what happened? I think the EPA and emissions came down hard on OEMs and as a result, they started supplying bikes to meet these standards. And as a result, they're super lean from the factory. And some bikes are worse than others, okay? And these are observations I found living here in Chicago, te temps range from 60 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, humidity 50 to 100%, and altitude is 600 feet above sea level. Also consider that the OEM supplies one bike that is supposed to run good across the entire US. From high and low altitude, along with temp and humidity, they need to supply a bike that will run okay for everyone and meet standards that are kind of you know, out of their control. So I think everyone can make a few tweaks that will uh, tailor the fuel mix for your conditions. The service manual is a good starting point, but I would go through the procedure anyway and see what your bike likes. And then if you have any modifications like air box or air filter modifications and exhaust, well then, you know, you obviously have to go through this. Okay, if you're shopping around for a jet kit, make sure to find one that comes with pilot jets. Most do not. You know, even before buying a jet kit, I would run through this procedure um, and see if you need larger or smaller pilot jets, because you can always buy them separately, even if the jet kit does not come with it. But, but really good jet kits will come with pilot jets as well. Okay, let's talk about the bike in this video. It's a 90 Yamaha Radian with good compression, 150 psi across the board, no vacuum leaks, and the carbs are clean. I took the carbs completely apart to get rid of the vacuum leaks on the throttle shaft seals. I soda blasted and ultrasonic cleaned the carbs. It has a jet kit in it and the stock pilots were 30. I went two sizes larger to 35 
and the fuel screws ended up at three and a quarter turns out. So really it could, could have gone one size larger on the pilot to say 37 and a half uh, to get those fuel screws right at three turns, which would have been perfect, but it ran good. Okay, so we're gonna head over to the whiteboard. I'm gonna do a little bit of theory and then we'll get to the bike uh, with adjusting the carbs. And the footage of me adjusting it on the bike is well over two years old. I never got around to posting this video. And also there's some audio popping. I have no idea what that is, so I apologize for that in advance. Um, it might have been right around the time I got my new camera equipment and audio, and I think the, the mic might have been clipping or something, so sorry about that. Okay, a couple more tips. So If you can't find the fuel screw, it's because they are hiding it from you. It could be under a welch plug, so I have a video on how to remove that up here, or sometimes they put these tamper-proof caps on the fuel screw that you can only turn it like quarter turn one way or another. I re recommend removing those and don't even replace it. I never put the welch plugs back in and the tamper screws, I, uh, if you apply a little heat to it, they come right off, they're just glued on and I just throw them out. I don't even bother with those things anymore. Okay, make sure to lightly seat the fuel screws. It is a little screw and it's got a tiny pointy end to it. It's so easy to snap them and have the point stuck in there and then you're really screwed. You're in for some fun to extract those and I don't even want to go there. I hope that doesn't happen to you. So really light pressure when you seat that. It's a very small screw. Okay, so the goal here is to have a re responsive fuel screw. And it should die when it's screwed all the way in because essentially you're cutting it off all the fuel. It should begin to stumble as you turn it in. Also, when you rev it up at idle, the RPMs should not dip below idle speed. If it dips and almost stumbles, then it's too rich. If the RPMs hang and take a while to or take a while to come down, the bike is lean. The fuel screw ends up at three turns or more. The pilot jet needs to be increased. Uh, a good rule of thumb for that is about half turn per jet size. So if you're at two, if you're at three and a half and you want to get down to three, bump it up one size. Also, if it's under one turn, it's too rich. Maybe even under two turns, it's too rich. I would decrease the pilot jet size. All right, whiteboard time. Let me draw a carburetor really quick. Okay, so we got the air side, air box. Got the engine. Uh, let's just do a butterfly instead of a CV, just for simplicity here. Okay, we got our fuel bowl. Okay, so this is just the car body. It's very generic drawing, just to illustrate my point here. All right, so we have some fuel in here, and here is our pilot jet. Okay, so here's an orifice, and the larger the number on the pilot jet, then the larger this hole will be. Okay, so this is your, your metering for this circuit. Okay, so... Fuel can come up two ways. It goes here in front of the butterfly, and it also goes here, right behind it. Okay, and I'll explain what both of these do in a second here. Um, I don't have, I ran out of colors here, so what we're gonna do is draw a fuel screw um, in green, okay? Uh, now the fuel screw is typically found on the bottom. That is the most common place it could also be right here or on top but it is always in front of the butterfly or the slide on the engine side of the carb so this is we're gonna call this the center line of the carb okay and it's always ahead of that on the engine side okay so at idle you have a very small gap right here okay this is at idle you have barely any air coming in so what happens is as air gets drawn past this blade, it's going to pull fuel out of here, out of this tiny hole. And this is what your fuel screw will trim. So if you want less to come out, then you screw this in, right? This thing moves up and down. Okay, so when you turn this guy all the way in, in theory, it should stall the engine. 
if it does install the engine, that means the pilot jet is too rich and it's actually pulling fuel out of here, okay? And I just said that it only pulls fuel from here, but it sometimes can pull a little bit from here. But just think of this as the only spot that fuel can come out of at idle, and this here is the trim, okay? So that's at idle. Now let's bump it up to eighth inch, I'm sorry, now let's bump it up to eighth throttle position. Okay, so that's, that's considered your cruise. Okay, so what's gonna happen is more air is gonna come here and it's gonna start pulling fuel out of this hole here. So now you're, you're technically 100% on the pilot jet. You're, you're flowing the maximum this thing can flow and that is your cruise air fuel ratio. Okay, and this hole's actually closer to the throttle blade, but in any case, I'm just, you know, trying to draw here. Okay, so that's that's what happens at a throttle. Okay, so these two are important. Typically when this is two to three turns out, trimming for maximum RPM and engine smoothness, then you also are gonna have a good air fuel ratio at cruise, okay? So let me, let me do a case study really quick. If you had a 30 pilot jet and that nets you three turns on the fuel screw, okay? And what I mean by that is if you adjust for peak RPM and you get three turns out, Let's just say that's a 13 to one AFR. Okay, I'm just making that number up, okay? Now let's say you go to a 35, uh, let me back up for a second. Okay, so let's say that nets you a 13 to one AFR at idle. And let's say it nets you a 13 to one AFR at cruise, cruise and idle, okay? So let's say you bumped it to a 35 pilot jet and that nets you two turns on the fuel screw. Your AFR at idle is still the same. Why? Because you trimmed it out. You're turning that screw in to reach the peak RPM. So it's still the same AFR at idle. The difference is now you're at 12 to one AFR at cruise. So it's gonna be a richer cruise, okay? Or if I went to a 25 pilot jet, let's say it's four turns on the fuel screw, still 13 to one AFR, maybe, maybe you can't even get there because you're four turns out. Um, but then this would be like a 14 to one AFR at cruise. Okay, so the pilot jet and the fuel screw, it has to be um, set up properly to get your idle correct and also your cruise. Okay, so consider that. Okay, so I mentioned four turns out. Well, what happens at four turns out? This screw is so far out that your taper is no longer effective on the screw. Okay, and when that happens, the engine wants more fuel, but you can't give it any more because this thing is all the way open and it just won't flow anymore, okay? So that's when you lose the effectiveness of the screw. Okay, one last thing. Every jet change is about a three to 5% change, approximately. And I also made that number up. All right, so here we are on the inline four cylinder and we're gonna talk a little bit about the fuel screw adjustment. Now, here's the carburetor, and I wanna define a few things first. Here is where the throttle shaft is, and this is where the butterfly opens. And this is a CV carb, and here is where the uh, constant velocity slide moves up and down. So if we put a, an imaginary line right here, we're gonna call this side the airbox side, and this side here the engine side. Whenever the screw is located on the engine side, it's considered a fuel screw. If it's located on the airbox side, it is a 
air screw, and that's what it meters. So if it's on this side, it meters fuel. On this side, air. If it meters fuel, you turn it in to lean it out, out to richen it. If it's located on the air box side, you turn it in to richen, out to lean. Okay, now that is in most cases. There are a few carburetors. The screw is located right here, and it is a pilot air screw. I've never seen a fuel screw located on the air box side. So on some Keyhan carburetors, there are air screws here, as well as some ammo carbs on Triumphs. They are located in front of the slide. But in any case, if you're in doubt, pull the screw out and compare the tip. If it's blunt, it meters air. If it's pointy, it meters fuel. All right, guys, so I have the tank off, and I have my auxiliary fuel tank uh, hooked up. Now, if you're interested in buying one of these tanks, I'll have a link to it in my video description. Um, I bought it for about 30 bucks, and I use it a ton. Anytime I'm working on a bike, I just get the tank off the bike, and I strictly work with this so I can you know, check for vacuum leaks, adjust the pilot screws, and so forth. It's just uh, much easier with the tank out of the way. All right, so what I'm going to do is this bike is already set up. I spent you know, past few weeks working on this, and they're all set at three turns out. Now, this fuel screw is located up here. Sometimes they can be on the side. Most common are on the bottom. Now, these um, oftentimes are covered with a Welch plug. And basically what that is, is it's a tamper-proof plug that they put in here, and they don't want you to mess with these, you know, due to emissions. That really showed up in the 80s and the 90s and they still use it today. So I have a video on where you drill it out and pull it out. Now, not only do you wanna adjust these, but if there's a plug in there, um, anytime you go to clean the carbs, that's an often overlooked item. The plug is in there, people don't take this out, therefore you can't clean the passages very well, and as a result, uh, people put their carbs back together and it pretty much runs the same. And that's because that passage has not been cleaned, your idle circuit. It's very important to clean that out. All right, so what, this bike is fully warmed up. I warmed it up, it's, it's nice and warm. Rode it for uh, a good 10 minutes, came in here, pulled the tank off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to close these screws down from three till Whenever it starts to stumble, I'll go half a turn at each carb, and you'll notice that the RPM uh, dies down, and then I'll bring it back out, and um, you'll see how the RPM increases. You basically want the highest, smoothest running RPM. Also, I'll blip the throttle at three turns, and you'll notice how quickly and smoothly the RPMs return back to idle. I'll do the same at two turns, and four turns and just to give you a lean and rich condition just so you can see how the engine behaves with less fuel and more fuel and a perfect mix. Okay, 
so it won't even run it two turns out. Let's set them back to three. Alright guys, as I mentioned before, this bike has uh, pilots which are two sizes larger than stock. I'm at three, maybe a little more than three turns out, maybe three and a quarter, three and a half. And I think this bike would really benefit to go into a, another size. And you know, since it wants to be at three, three and a quarter, three and a half right now, I think with another size up that'll add about 5% more fuel and it would get the screws to um, three turns out and it would probably be really happy with that. Um, now I do want to say, you know, at three and a quarter or anywhere from three to three and a half, it runs great idling here on the stand and it does uh, run really good on the street, no bogging, no issues. So, you know, I'm gonna leave it at this for now. There's other issues I have to address with this bike and it also is about 60 degrees right now. So as it warms up to 70, 80 degrees, it may be perfect at three turns out. So just keep that in mind, that temperature does affect everything. And um, currently it's spring here in Chicago. One day it's 50 degrees, another day it's 70 degrees. So the temperature is kind of, uh, the weather's playing um, uh, tricks on me, you know? So um, in any case, this is a huge improvement over stock or what it came in as. So um, that's pretty much how you tune multiple carbs. Just jump half a turn at each turn, time, each carb and you, you can definitely see how the idle RPM changes as you turn these things in and out. It was running really rough at two turns and as I increased it to three, smooth out and it even went smooth out even further as I went to three and a half four turns out four turns obviously it, the, the taper of the the screw loses its effectiveness so um, 
you know, three to three and a half is where this bike is happy right now. And um, I'm really debating on throwing another pilot in here, one large size up. So it had a 30 as it came in, it's at a 35. Next would be, uh, I believe, 37 and a half, and then 40, or whatever the sizes are in Makuni here. All right, guys, a huge thanks to my patrons who support videos like this. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, there'll be the link right there. You get some perks like premium videos and T-shirts and stuff like that, so make sure to check it out. All right, that's it for this video. Make sure to hit that like button and share this with your riding buddies. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified right away when new videos come out. If you'd like to support me in creating more videos such as this one, Check out my Patreon page and see if you can help me out. You can also buy me an ice cold beer or two by clicking on the link. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.